Hi kids. Let's talk about IF cans. I have this Crosley dashboard radio. Of course, I already have a video on a, another one of these. It's not this radio, but one pretty much just like it. This is one I'm doing for a friend of mine. Um, didn't do a video on the restoration of this because of course I already have a video on one of these. This one happens to be the uh, 10135, the white one. Cabinet's in good enough shape where I'm not gonna have to repaint it. It's got, you know, it's got a ding here and there, but I mean, really nice shape for its age. Uh, all I had to do was repaint the knobs because they had lost too much paint. And then I put a little bit of that brown wax you saw me use in the guitar video. Put a little bit of that on there to age it a little bit more. It's an off-white to begin with, but uh, it was still a little too bright. So I put some of that brown wax on there and matched it up nice. Problem is I fried one of the IF cans. Um, got something hooked up wrong when I was trying to do an alignment on it and a little puff of smoke came out. And uh, we lost this one. And how do we know that other than the puff of smoke? Well, it's a simple continuity test. You just take your multimeter and set it for continuity so that it does this. And you, uh, I'll show you, I'll show you on one out, outside the radio is what I'll do. That'll be easier to see. I'll just move this back. Um, this is, this is what the old IF cans look like. Uh, until the late forties, around 49, you know, these are much better in older radios. They went to these little guys, um, around, I don't know, 49 or so, you know, and, uh, they look like that. And they're notorious for going bad. But what you do is you see there's always a green dot or a colored dot um, that shows you how to put it inside the chassis. If you look at the one in the radio, it's got a green dot. So when I replace it with a different one, I'll know which, which, which one of these is basically uh, connection number one. So what you do is you, uh, you look at these connections and you take your meter and you go right across see these two have continuity you go flat side to flat side and you should get continuity straight across the problem with this one is i pulled this out of another set this is out of a filco there is no continuity on this side so this one's bad too so looking for a replacement this isn't it so what I, what I did was I took the other one out of the Philco. The difference so, uh, with this one is what they look like inside, by the way. The difference with this one is it had six leads on it. And I just broke the two center ones off because I don't need them. And this one has good continuity um, on the remaining four. I go across here and across here. Okay, so we can use this one. Okay, they are both, um, says right on there, um, 455KC. That's uh, what we want for this radio, according to the uh, Crosley schematic. The one coming out of it is, a, most. that's the most common in this kind of radio, is a 455 kilohertz or kilocycle. And uh, so what we're gonna do is, I've already taken the capacitors out of this, um, and I'll show you, I'm going to get the other one out of this and I'll use it to show you exactly how we repair these because the capacitors in these, like I said, these are notorious for going bad. The capacitors in these go bad and then your radio sounds like there's an electrical storm going on inside of it. It sounds like thunder crashing when you're trying to uh, find a station and you have to replace those. It's, it's silver migration disease is what it's commonly referred to. And, uh, so let me get the bad can out of this radio and I'll show you what those capacitors look like, where they are and how to remove them. Okay, so got that out. This is the one, the dead one out of the Crosley. Had a piece of felt glued to it because it had a replacement speaker that was rubbing up against this, but I have since gotten rid of that and put a correct speaker in it from a part set. So, got a part number on it, but it doesn't say that it's a 455, but I know that it is 
because that's what it says on the parts list on the schematic. So I'll see if we can get it. Oh, I got it. You have to pry these little metal tabs up. These little metal tabs, you have to pry them up. Which you get. I got everything disconnected and um, I, uh, well, first I, I took a picture and made a wiring diagram so I don't have to rely on the schematic too much to put the new one in. And let's see, we got, uh, let's see, this is interesting. I got a couple of dead bugs in there, you know? couple of them in there. I'm sure they've been dead for, you know, 40, 50 years. Anyway. Get rid of that. Come on. Get out of here. There. Anyway. So here it is. And, um, that's what that one looks like on the inside. I'm trying to figure out how you uh, grab my meter back real quick. see that one's good that one's not so this side is the one that is fried I don't know a couple of different places it could be anyway they've got these just super thin wires in here and and it's just ridiculous you know they're so easy to burn or break Anyway, what happens with these is in the bottom, most of them have them in the bottom. I have seen some that have them in the top and the ones with the capacitors in the top are a lot easier to fix. But they have them down here. You can see this, this metal um, retainer here. You know, it's like a compression fitting. It's holding these two pieces of plastic together. And in between those are the wafer capacitors. They made of made of mica or whatever, and they have these uh, you know the um, silver material in there. So there's a couple of ways. It doesn't matter on this one. We can't hurt this one because it's already dead. There's a couple of ways to get that out of there. Some people will take their soldering iron, which this one's not turned on right now, and they'll just hold it on there and heat that thing up and basically melt the plastic until they can get that to separate and get that out of there or you can drill it out and that's what I did on this one I drilled it out and uh, it was successful I didn't break anything um, so uh, let me um, see about getting this out of here and I will show you what those well hang on actually I don't have to do that but um, what you want to do see here's one that I already took out and what you what you do here is you can see that that's got the remnants of those you see the white part that's the capacitor, or one of them. There's more than one in there. They usually have two. And um, they go bad. The silver that's in them starts to, starts to migrate. You can see the dark areas on that. And it causes all kinds of problems. So I'm not gonna bother drilling that out. I just, I'm showing you where they are. And they're just, you know, they're just sandwiched in the bottom of there. And you drill that out very carefully or probably put the heat to it would work better and then you end up with this you can see that it's no longer there there are no capacitors in there anymore and so what you have is you have these two contacts and you can see as I move that up and down a little bit you can see see that that capacitor used to be sandwiched in between these contacts so what I have to do now is insulate these contacts so that I don't so that these don't touch each other in here. There's still wires attached to these, so there's still continuity between these two, but I don't want those, these contacts inside, I don't want them touching. So there's a couple of different ways to do that. I'm gonna, I've done heat shrink before, and that's probably what I'll do on here. You can cut them out of there, because these probably, you know, if you leave enough of a bend in it, because you can see how much some of these move. If you leave enough of a bend in it, it, uh, it probably won't fall out. You wouldn't want that because if it falls out, the wire is going to break and then it's useless. So I'm going to insulate these and there's another, it's hard to see, but there's another 
contact in there. And that's what those, those two center posts were for. And I don't need that. Um, I'm gonna isolate everything, insulate everything so that none of that's touching in there. And then that, that second contact, actually the third contact in there, uh, won't matter. That's why I broke the pins off. You can see the stub of them there. I broke the pins off. And we're just gonna go and make this into a four pin can instead of a six pin can. Um, so let me see if I can get these insulated and uh, we'll take it from there, hang on. Okay, so what I decided to do was basically, well not basically, what I decided to do was just break those off. I didn't have any heat shrink that was big enough. I've got very small stuff is all I have right now. I've got to get some more. Um, so I just broke them off, just bent them back and forth till they snapped. So they're not in any danger of touching each other inside there. So now what I need to do is clean up these contacts because they still got all kinds of solder and leads and things stuck to them. Put this back together, double check my continuity to make sure I didn't break it. And then we will uh, put it back in the radio. And what you do is you take a couple of these here that I need to untwist. You take these capacitors and you put them underneath, you know, there's not enough room to put them inside this. A little too big. So you just, once you put this back in the radio and you're, and you're re reattaching all of the wires, you just attach these. Um, like I said, flat side to flat side is where the continuity is. So you just, you just solder them in that way. Wherever the, you know, if these two have continuity, you put one there. If these two have continuity, you put one there. According to my schematic, the capacitors in the original can were um, a 106 and a 131 picofarad. These are microcaps, modern ones. Um, so, problem is I don't have a, a 131 or anything close to it. This is a 100. That's perfect to replace the 106. It's close enough. I don't have any. Thing I can use to make something close to 131. It would be, it's either going to be 100, which is too low, or 164, which is too high. I'm probably just going to put a 100 on each side and call it good. I think the radio will work fine. It probably isn't absolutely ideal, but that's what I have, and I want to get this thing working so I can give it to my friend. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to switch the soldering iron on and clean up these leads, and uh, then we're going to put it back in and reattach everything and see if we can get this thing to receive stations again. Hang on. Okay, got it cleaned up. Uh, I just opened up the holes and cleaned some of the solder off of it. I really didn't want to get too rough with these leads because the wires that are attached to them are so small, you know. Interesting, I was kind of looking at this. Um, this is the Philco that we're gonna replace the Crosley with. This is the Crosley, you know. They're identical. This one's stamped Philco, and this one has, you know, Crosley or whoever part numbers on it. Even the printing on the top and everything is exactly the same. So I thought that was interesting. I think they were mass produced for the most part by only one or two companies, and everybody started using them. Um, they suck. They can ruin a radio, you know? When they go bad, they can absolutely ruin a radio. I've got. Uh, We've got a video on that the old symphonic radio record player. You see me playing a, a stack of green country 45s in that video. The radio doesn't work on that radio because of this. One of these days, I'm going to fix it. I had a set of cans set aside because I wanted to fix that one. But uh, a friend of mine needed one of these for one of his projects. So I let him have one. And then um, I think I used the other one. I did. I used the other one in that black Emerson radio got that video that little black Emerson radio that I used to have I give a demonstration of that I had to put the other one in that because it had the same problem as this you know it was working I had it all recapped and ready to go and before I knew it poof one of these just quit working I didn't do anything to it it just quit and um, so I had to use that other good one so hopefully we can get this thing working I'm gonna put it back in the radio and see what I can do with it and then I will finish this up okay hang on okay well that was fun Theoretically, for whatever that's worth, it should work. Let's see if I can give you some idea here. Right there. 
You can see the two new capacitors connected to the underside of that can. I've done the continuity test <clears throat> and I've still got continuity. So, let me get this thing a little untangled here, my antenna and my power cord. We are going to uh, plug it in and see what happens. I'll switch off my soldering iron and my overhead light to avoid interference. Let's see what, if anything, happens here. I have no idea. It should work, but that will not work perfectly. You'll have to get it adjusted, you know. That's what those IF cans are for. That's how you make your adjustments when you're doing an alignment. Well, there you go. We were questioning the Lakers in... Speaker's not the greatest. So I have like this insulated screwdriver, just the very tip of it is exposed, the rest of it is um, heat shrink. And then I have this set of plastic alignment tools that, eh, they're not the greatest. I think they're more for TVs than anything. But anyway, you, you can get in here and... And give that a tweak. But let's say it this way. Let's say we're drafting 30 teams. There's 30 so other getting stronger teams. that way. So it's going to be Giannis plus a normal. Yeah. So anyway, that's not how you do a proper alignment, but that's what those are for. You get it hooked up. I'll get it hooked up to my signal generator and give it a proper alignment. Um, you adjust the IF cans top and bottom, and then you adjust these uh, slugs on the tuning, uh, tuning gang for the uh, antenna. And... Um, I'll tell you, make them work as best they can. Anyway, that is how you do that. And that was successful, I'm happy to say. And obviously, it's going to need some adjustment, need an alignment, but it works. We're back to having an operating radio again. Um, and uh, so I hope, that, uh, I hope that was worth it. I hope you learned something when it comes to these little bastards, because these little ones, like I said, they, they suck. They're just about all, not, not always bad, but boy, they're bad a lot of the time. But anyway, that's how you fix that. If you, if you have a bad one, um, you need to replace it, and you want to make sure you're not messing around with that uh, SMD, that silver migration disease, that's how you replace the capacitors. You got to get the old ones out. You got to make sure those inside contacts aren't making contact anymore. And then you have to put your new capacitors underneath. And there you go. That's, you know, when I was uh, working on this yesterday, it wasn't receiving a thing. It was just sitting here humming. And now, you know, as you can hear, back, back to normal more or less. So that's the good news. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Hope it helped uh, in case you end up with a project like this. And, um, let me know in the comments what you think. I appreciate it. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.